concentrate, but uh, focus. Come on, we need to focus, focus! What is focus? Marketed as flow state or being in the zone, it's the unity between our minds and what we've selected to gift our limited energy to. Most of us intrinsically crave an internal throttle that we can twist at will to ramp up our brain power, or a switch we can flick to allow laser hot attention on any task. Allocating large chunks of our finite brain energy to selected tasks is not easy, but that's what many of us are striving for. During a single day, we have around 70,000 thoughts sprung upon us, as well as intrinsic animal needs that are constantly beckoning for our attention. We're required to navigate through an incalculable number of external stimuli around us, carving a path through cunning advertisements, vibrant technology, and an overwhelm of people. A guaranteed 24-hour fishing line is out there, waiting for us to nibble on and grab our attention. Our attention relies on our ability to rank potential distractions in order of relevance, allowing us to perceive only one or a few chosen targets among the crowd. Focus blurs out the noise and lets us target our energy to align with our goals. In the right hands, focus is power. Join me as we take a look at what non-drug-related ADHD treatments can teach us all about improving focus and brain health. The options will surprise you. This video is made by and made for enthusiastic laymen interested in exploring options to recapture our evaporating focus and attention spans. My name's Lewis McSporran, and this video is for your eyes only. Writing a book, doing homework, memorizing lines, reading music, catching a wave, painting a mural, playing video games, filing your accounts, hitting a serve, all require focus like many other activities we partake in and can be foiled by a lack of it. We all struggle with focus. I certainly do every day to some degree. And it's my own attention shortcomings that initially pushed me to do the research for this video and create it for you. I'm learning here too, believe me, and I'm searching for the same results that you are. So how will we know once our focus has been improved? What does it feel like to be in the flow or in the zone? Our energy highly targeted at one task to meet one objective. There are some common unconscious traits or indicators that appear when we are in deep focus. Our sense of self disappears, our inner critic that may usually taunt us is inaudible, our time perception becomes completely warped. Often deep effort can be exerted for hours on end, and we only realize this when we snap out of it. Time seems to fly by. This also often ties in with our mammalian urges being suppressed. You might not have eaten or felt at all thirsty during this period. These urges are temporarily deprioritized in pursuit of a greater goal. We know from experience and my previous video on the topic that focus gained without drugs is a much healthier long-term solution for most people. Prescription stimulants are available for focus, but they can lead to harmful dependencies. They gift emotional and attention highs, but they can also swing our minds into deep and painful lows if abused. Sleep can also be affected badly by stimulant medication. So badly, in fact, that kids that are prescribed ADHD stimulant medication can often see slower growth development than their peers due to a lack of regenerative sleep, although they usually catch up on this during drug holidays over the summer break. Strengthening our focus without fast-acting drugs is usually a slower road, but is also one that we're less likely to crash on. It's evident that both the user and the supplier of stimulant drugs for focus benefit in the short term, but it's the long-term results that always weigh the balances in favor of the supplier. The drugs treat the symptoms and not the source of the problem, and that's why we're here. Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, ADHD, is thought to be caused by an underdevelopment in the right dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. This area of the brain manages executive functions, one of these being attention or our focus. The main neurochemical that oversees these functions is dopamine, and if we don't have enough dopamine, we struggle to control these executive functions. In short, the underdevelopment causes lower dopamine levels, which in turn inhibits focus abilities. It's worth noting that poverty in attention is not the only symptom of ADHD, but it's the one we'll be focusing on today. For those without ADHD, maybe with just lowered attention levels or merely seeking to boost theirs further, it's the dopamine levels that we need to monitor in our brains. If we can find ways to raise our overall dopamine levels through healthy means, we can increase our mood, motivation, and mental focus. So let's find out how. The salient goal of the following treatments is to expose our bodies and minds to selected stimuli 
that will raise various chemicals inside of our brain naturally. As well as dopamine, norepinephrine along with epinephrine are also implicated in this process. Colloquially, these two are better known as noradrenaline and adrenaline. The three of them are collectively known as catecholamines, shortened to CATs. Let's cover five of the main cat boosting activities, treatments, and holistic remedies that will help our precious focus. The first and one of my favorites is cold water exposure, popularized by the Iceman, Wim Hof. Jumping into an ice bath or open lake can have real and lasting effects on our focus chemicals. Many stimulant sources have been studied in detail over the years, and their impact on us is often characterized by how much, on average, they increase our dopamine levels above our baseline. In the case of cold water, it can cause a two and a half times dopamine increase above our baseline. Amazingly, this is the same increase cocaine has on our neurochemistry. However, cold water exposure, unlike a line of the white stuff, does not evoke the rise and rapid crash of dopamine. Its dopamine increase can last for over three hours, sustaining its level without crashing. Deliberate cold water can be effectively used to change your mental state, opening the gate to noradrenaline and adrenaline release from one part of our brain to join a steady flow of dopamine and other feel-good chemicals from another. There's many ways to experience cold water exposure. In the shower, an ice bath, open water swimming during winter. There's also a plethora of high-tech products available to use in your garden or even your office, making sure you get your daily dose of cold. It's an effective focus solution and guaranteed to wake you up in the morning. There's many studies showing that it can have real impact on our overall energy levels and clarity. The second focus solution includes various herbal and off-the-shelf substances that you may find useful. The first is CBD oil. The ads you're bombarded with on Facebook and the pop-up shops we're seeing more and more of in shopping centers may actually be onto something. CBD, short for cannabidiol, is an extract from the cannabis plant. You'll find a seemingly infinite number of disorders and diseases that CBD manufacturers claim to cure. That 2019 report by the National Institutes of Health indicates that CBD supplements can potentially promote new neuron growth within the brain, which may explain CBD's advertisability to improve mental sharpness and focus, as well as its calming effects without being overly sedating. Next up is Lion's Mane Extract. Originally used for culinary and medicinal use in Asian countries such as Korea, India, Japan, and China, this mushroom is now being widely used for its cognitive effects. The lion's mane fungi gets its name from resembling the big cat's mane whilst it grows, and has been shown to have powerful anti-inflammatory and antioxidant properties. It promotes regeneration in the brain cells and aids myelination, a process by which additional layers of myelin wrap around neuronal axons, protecting and insulating them. Lion's mane is thought to boost focus through its deflammatory effects, allowing more oxygen to flow to the brain, which in turn triggers a mental performance boost and clears brain fog symptoms. Another natural way to boost your focus is said to be with yerba mate tea. It shares the neuroprotective properties of lion's mane, but also contains around 85 milligrams of caffeine. That's just slightly less than a cup of coffee and just slightly more than a cup of tea. Several human studies observed improved alertness, short-term recall, and reaction time in participants who consumed a single dose. Yerba mate is a herbal tea made from leaves and twigs of the mate plant, a holly that grows naturally in South American countries like Argentina, Brazil, and Uruguay. It was famously used by Charles Darwin, who called it the perfect stimulant, and has been advocated by entrepreneur and author Tim Ferriss in more modern times. It's usually consumed for its caffeine-fueled energy boost. But interestingly, unlike coffee, yerba mate is a vasodilator as opposed to a vasoconstrictor, meaning that it widens blood vessels, whereas coffee constricts them, making it brilliant for enhanced circulation and lowering blood pressure. This effect may also explain why yerba mate doesn't come with the anxiety or jittery feeling we get with other caffeinated drinks. Another naturally occurring option is guarana extract a powder made from the crushing of fruit grown by a climbing plant from the Amazon jungle. Amazonian tribes have used it in therapeutic remedies for centuries, and it's more recently exploded onto the scene as an energy booster in many sports drinks. Similar to yerba mate, it contains caffeine and has antioxidant effects in the body. In fact, guarana has similar antioxidant properties to that of green tea. It can offer a real boost to energy and mental focus. Its fruit seeds are potent, some containing up to four to six times more caffeine caffeine and coffee beans. Studies on animals seem to have also shown that guarana intake can also improve memory retention. Unfortunately, like lion's mane and yerba mate, it's 
studies haven't quite caught up with its synthetic drug rivals. The studies aren't quite as large or as conclusive as we like them to be, but current results are very encouraging, and there's plenty of non-clinical reports of them working wonders. Let's move away now from the ingested options for focus and turn our attention to a different source. One that is also only in its youth of being tested fully by modern science, but has also been around and embraced for centuries. Meditation. American neuroscientist Dr. Andrew Huberman in his podcast on ADHD tells us that as little as 17 minutes of meditation once can have lasting positive effects and focus. Additionally, there are studies by Columbia University Medical Center showing that meditating can help sculpt the very topography of our brain structure and its functions through relaxation. Participants in their studies showed an increase in focus, learning concentration, memory, and attention spans. Our minds flirt with new ideas and reflections constantly. It's thought that our minds are usually lost in thought around 47% of the time. And as we know, this isn't a bad thing, but it's important we have the ability to choose to be present with our thoughts of choice, harmonizing with them meaningfully when needed. The breath is one area of the body you can practice resting your attention on through meditation. Monitoring, without judgment, the downward pull of your diaphragm and its steady release is a great place to start. It's free, everyone can do it, and after a while you can start to gauge the types of breathing you exhibit when you're nervous, excited, and what we're really interested in, when you're focused. Whilst going through this process, your mind will naturally wander to emerging thoughts, sounds, and sensations around you. But the repetition of releasing these distractions and bringing your lens of attention back to your present breath is what's thought to metaphorically strengthen your focus muscles, both when repeating subsequent meditations and more generally when you're out experiencing your busy day. You can also try this meditation method with a word part of your body or an object with the same results. And now for some technology. Transcranial Magnetic Stimulation, or TMS, creates a magnetic field using a coil in a handheld wand device. If exposed to a certain area of a person's head, it will either lower or increase the activity in that specific area of the brain. It's not a super highly tuned device, but it can be used relatively accurately. As you can imagine, Due to the potential this device could have on learning, memory, and mood, scores of studies have taken off, and we're finding out more and more about it. Interestingly for us, it has started to be used as an ADHD treatment to stimulate the underdeveloped areas of the prefrontal cortex. Directed TMS is now being combined with focused learning tasks for patients to do whilst undergoing treatment. The goal being to trigger the neural pathways needed for long-term results without the device. For obvious reasons, I'm not suggesting you run out and get yourself some magnetic stimulation, especially if you don't have ADHD. But this treatment, combined with some of the other options we've been discussing, and those still to investigate, could open a whole new world of focused possibilities. But on with our story. The fifth option is therapy, and more specifically, behavioral therapy or family therapy. You may have already gained from watching one of my previous videos on the cause of ADHD, the environment or the genes. Although ADHD might not be in your DNA, it does run through family trees as a learnt disorder, making talking about ADHD and attention retention concerns a more profitable experience of shared with those around you. I won't go into much detail here as this information is always very relative to the individual and it's actually very hard to find any sort of concrete statistics on its benefits. However, many ADHD experts do advocate either cognitive behavioral therapy or family therapy to set goals at school, work, and at home, and to resolve any underlying issues. Something I was always confused by was the difference between the two therapy types, psychiatry and psychology. Well, to paint it out, psychiatrists can diagnose ADHD and can prescribe medication, and psychologists can diagnose ADHD but cannot prescribe medication. They focus more on talk therapy, helping people explore their feelings. It's worth noting that neither one is better than the other, and when interacting with any type of professional in this particular field, therapists are not all made equally. We've discussed dopamine's role in the focus centers of our prefrontal cortex, but what if I was to put a spanner in the works and tell you that there's a whole new field of studying ADHD treatments, targeting a very different area of the brain? It aims to conquer both ADHD and dyslexia, and has no connection with dopamine or the prefrontal cortex. This new movement is attempting to resolve symptoms by treating a much more primal area of the brain, the cerebellum. 
Interestingly, the cerebellum is the most plastic of all regions of the brain, meaning it can be molded and you can readily increase the number of connections. Our cerebellum, Latin for little brain, is located at the back of our heads and only takes up 10% of our brain volume, but holds 75% of the brain's neurons. That's roughly 69 billion neurons. The prefrontal cortical thinking we previously visited is 100,000 times slower than the calculations in the cerebellum. Connected to the inner ears, it receives and delivers balance and physical movement information. It is thought that we might be able to improve reading and focus abilities by strengthening this area of the brain. Balance and spatial awareness courses have now been designed to target and strengthen the connections within our cerebellums. A company called Zing Performance has already had over 50,000 people go through their programs with positive results. Additionally, researcher and author of the book Disconnected Kids, Dr. Robert Milo, has opened up over 100 franchises in the US he calls Brain Balance Achievement Centers. To explain the idea behind these treatments, let's look at the story between the ears. The 3D compass structure inside of our inner ear is called our vestibular system. When we talk about the combination of this and our cerebellum, it's termed the vestibulocerebellar system, or VCS for short. This is a very sophisticated part of our brains, and in humans, takes at least the first few years of life to mature. Once optimized, however, it's capable of summoning our most instant reflexes and split-second thinking. It's the area of the brain that soon makes walking automatic, and eventually allows us to master right a bike. Dr. Jeremy Schmaman, neurologist, director of the Laboratory of Neuroanatomy and Cerebellar Neurobiology at the Massachusetts General Hospital, first started research on effects of injuries to this area of the brain, publishing a paper on his findings in 1998 and undergoing various studies since. Dr. Schmaman uncovered that the VCS plays a key role in learning new skills, emotional processes and focus. This was a revolutionary finding, and today the above programs that are rolling out both online and in person to children and adults across the Western world use tools such as balance boards, juggling, and exercises to purposefully make the participant dizzy to target and strengthen the VCS. The results seem to be amazing so far, and the research very much continues. A more fringe attempt to target and control the VCS system in its patients with ADHD and dyslexia, Harold Levinson, MD, has been known to prescribe motion sickness medication. It's rather an out-of-the-box idea, and as you can imagine, there's very limited research in the method. You can see the logic though. These pills work directly on the VCS for their original purpose. Levinson and his patients stand by his treatments, believing they help in the same way other VCS options do whether via caffeine and cold water to boost your focus chemicals, or via meditation and balance training to strengthen your mind. The salient goal here is to become more deliberately present. The art of being present is at the core of focus, and to be in flow with the task is to be at one with its challenges in real time. Temporarily closing the door to a storm of distractions, we can choose to be at home with just one. Whichever methods you test, when you're at the beach, be at the beach. And when you're at the office, be at the office. If you're caught in between, both you, your work, and the people around you will suffer. There's still much to learn about ADHD and focus. The next chapter in treatments and mental performance enhancers is still being written. New and fruitful options are being discovered and old ones rediscovered. But just think, if the energy we drive towards that looming goal of focus is simply redirected to grounding ourselves in the present, change can arise today. American naturalist, essayist, poet, and philosopher Henry David Thoreau once wrote, you must live in the present. Launch yourself on every wave. Find your eternity in each moment. My name's Lewis McSporin, and this is my channel, Brilliant Brain. Thanks for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed this short video series. That's it for me on ADHD stories, but subscribe and hit the notification bell, and stay tuned for new chapters on different stories coming soon.